Now, can he pick up what would be a sixth PDC title? Paul Nicholson alongside me for the machine and the bronzed Adonis with the final Pro Tour title of the year on the line. Well, it is a huge game, isn't it? Both on title droughts of sorts. 60. But what interests me is that their last meeting was at the 2020 World Championship and it was won by beaten by four legs to two. And it was a game that 58. a lot of people remember for a specific reason. Not just because Steve won that last 32 match, a third last 32 match that they've ever had at the PDC World Championship, but it was a game where Steve, maybe for the first time in his career, showed a little bit of being cheesed off. 137. And didn't he use it well? well? He did. You would imagine any lingering grudge would have dissipated in the intervening time. It's been a long old 25. time. 25. Can't imagine there's been many visits like that from the bronze to Donis today. No, he's got to get a hold of that 60, the way he did against Chisnell in the semis. Hey, Can't afford one. to let James have the start that he had against Martin Schindler in the other semi. That's the dart he needs to create the visits that will possibly lead him to eight legs, which is what he needs in this final. Oh, is he staying there? How do you get the ball from there? That's impossible. Top left. 70. It was impossible. Physics said he had to go to the 17s there, surely. Yeah, that was a very, very small window. Game but that shot. is a 96 out. Perfectly pitched by Beaton to take the lead with a break of throw. He hits the front at the very start. And he can't wait to get on with it. If he can maintain this pace, he really could run fast. Well, 276 points cleared in just two visits to the board. And I'm reluctant to even accredit that as a, a dart for the leg for James Wade because I, I genuinely think it was impossible to hit it. Yeah, I think if he'd gone about two feet left, thrown it high and hard, that was the only way he was getting that ball. 61. Well, I, th I think that's a tactical error. But ultimately... You can't legislate for beating clearing nearly 300 points in two visits to the board. <laughs> These things do happen when you're playing against the best in the world. And Steve Beaton has ensured that he will be going to the World Championship again, extending a consecutive run of appearances at World Championships across both codes 100. to well into, what, a third decade. Is it 34? 32 now. 32. Extraordinary. 140. Six matches each today. Wade has come through a few battles, especially in the last two rounds. 81. Beat Watermina by six legs to five, and I'm led to believe that he did face match darts. I think five of them. How about this for a 164? Well, James Wade's had a dart at the bullseye. That one was certainly not obscured. Okay, 12 segment. That leaves the bull. 94. The bull is being scared, but not punctured. Double 10. Game shot. A quintessential weird finish to break immediately back. Well, we saw the world number one play the world number 127 yesterday in the final. Jan Van Veen taking on Gerwin Price. These two, very, very familiar names, but not guys who've even been threatening to win titles, let's be 41. honest, this year. So the fact that there's only 49 places between them in the rankings is very small compared to yesterday. It is, but it's a strange situation. I mean, James 60. Wade is still very, very high up in the world rankings, but he is sitting on that UK Open money from two years ago, and it's going to come off when the UK Open rolls One around. Hundred. In a funny sort of way, he goes to every World Championship, doesn't he? With this possibility of getting himself further up the rankings. 57. But the world has never been his home. But I'm right in thinking, aren't I, Dan, that he's not in the Grand Slam and he's got to play tomorrow. Yeah, I assume he's entered. I believe he's entered for it. But... 
It is the tournament where he, he reached the final two years ago. Jose de Souza, the man who beat him in that final, again, having to come through the qualifier. There's an awful lot of big names at the Grand Slammer Darts, or not at the Grand Slammer Darts, I should say, who are having to go through the qualifier. Gary Anderson, he's not going to be there. He's not even playing the qualifier. Now think about the amount of money that would come off if he didn't qualify tomorrow. Winning today is not going to influence that. All he wants is to win a title. 44. He gives Beaton a chance of 2-1 and three breaks in three legs. Only going to be one dart at tops. Game oh, shot. that is beautiful. You can see he's gone for the treble 20, ended up a little bit low and to the right, but then stayed on that line to leave so much open space in the double top and use that top left corner. Really, 81. really good shot. I've never seen a player so masterful at getting the break of throw and then turning on the hockey so fast and planting that first dart in the 60 so quickly. It's just what he does. But Wade's the man for the 180s. That's his second of this contest. Is he going to be backed up? 140. Not quite. Wade has got the slimmer barrels. He's got the more likelihood of finding those maximums you would feel. No, he's had a couple of 180s in this. Not going to find a third there that would have 99. teased us with the possibility of a nine dart. I've not seen one today. We haven't needed one, Dan, with all the drama for Minehead and Ali Pali. I'll tell you what, there are some very, very happy people right now who will be watching this from hotels, on smart devices. How about the likes of John O'Shea, who's going to make an Ali Pali debut? Relieves people like Adam Gavlas, who finished in the 32nd position. He's going back to Ali Pali. 60. Well, only the 60, but at least he stayed straight to leave the Shanghai finish. But it could be yet another break of throw. Likes to go this way for the 82, James Wade. Leaves double seven. He won the semi-final on this shot. 75. He comes inside on it this time around. He's getting plenty of chances beaten, isn't he? He's had a chance in every leg. Oh, what a dart for tops. 100. Almost majestic. That second dart was unbelievable. Double two, then. Game dart. shot. Great dart from James Wade there. Just slides in alongside it for yet another break of throw. Four legs in, everything going against the darts. But they have both had darts to win every single leg of this match. It could, in another universe, be 4 0 either way. I hate to be that person, you know, but we haven't seen Steve at the match play for a couple of years, have we? And this isn't doing his match play return any harm. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's, I know that all the talk has been around the Players' Championship Finals. It's the last tournament to qualify for that. It's the 58. last chance for many players, in terms of the rankings, the last chance for many players to get into the World Championship. There is, of course, a last chance qualifier for tour card holders. And with things like the slam 58. or whatever, you might be able to force you into the top 32 and be a seeded player. But it's unlikely there'll be a great deal of movement in that regard. But it is a one-year rolling system. Winning money 95. here can get you into the seedings for these events, for Euro Tours, for example. James Wade is only down in the, the low 20s in the seedings. He's the number 26 seed here 98. today, and that's with a few players having withdrawn. Yeah, so he's not looking good for being a seeded player for European events next year. He's going to have to qualify. That adds to his schedule. 58. It could well add... 13 more days to his schedule for next year. That's why Gerwin Price was so urgent to win yesterday. 135. Well, again, we're seeing the player against the darts really pushing. You said something to me off the air. 60. That there is a likelihood this match would be around the 93 mark. It's proving to be that way. Double 16. 54. Chance for Wade. I don't see him going 19s here. It's not his MO. Yeah, they're both averaging that 93 sort of range 60. for the day. They've both gone over the 100. Well, no. Yeah, they have gone over the 100 mark once. Game shot. But Steve Beaton, another break. 
Nobody can really get a grip of this game. Nobody can hold their throw. There's only one hold of throw that Steve actually wants. 139. This one. He'll take breaks all the way at the end. I mentioned the word romance at the end of the semi-final. What do you think the social media outpouring would be if Steve was to win his sixth PDC title today? I'm worried Four about my own five. personal outpouring if Steve Eaton manages to win a title after half a decade. The funny thing is, he knows how to do it. First PDC title 93. came way back. Was it 2003? Certainly in that ballpark. 2001, 16. actually. So if you think about the gaps between his PDC titles, it makes for very, very interesting reading. It makes the win in this one more likely because he's come through this kind of drought before. When he won in 2017, that was after a four-year gap to the German Masters in 2013. And then, of 44. course, before that, he had two wins in 2001 after a win in 2009. So droughts have just been part of his career. Yeah, he's, he's not a prolific title winner, not in PDC darts. But the thing is, he's maintained a certain level, a competitive level throughout his entire time in the PDC that means there's always a chance. And every now and again, he takes that chance. 136. And that is a very, very decent two-treble visit for Beaton. And he's going to get a chance to hold his throw. It'd be the first hold to throw in this final, and it could open up a little bit of daylight. 50. He's been the better player by the tiniest of margins in this game. But James Wade's on 120, and you don't want to let Wade have a go at those sort of figures. No, you don't. Game shot. Well adhered to, Steve. 4-2, halfway point for Beaton. Against a player he doesn't have the greatest record against. They've played 24 times. 121. And James has won 20 of them. But like I said, the last meeting was a shade under three years ago. And it was a different format. It was set play over six. Well, it was played over six sets. Could have been seven. He's never managed to win consecutive games against James Wade in all that time playing. Their first meeting was back in 2006. So this is 16 years of playing each other. And all that time, he's never managed to win one game and then win the next game. Their last meeting, as you say, was... I mean, it's 96. getting on for three years ago. But he did win it. And it was a big one at the World Championship. This is a big one. I mean, arguably, one of his biggest... The biggest one he won was 93. the European Championship semi-finals back in 2009. He managed to win that one. In yeah, a last the leg decider. The Invincible Taylor European Championship in Hofdorp. 95. Yeah, Beaton was excellent that week. He really did graft to make that final. When we see him in action today... With 60. the throw that looks the same as ever. It just looks easy. All right, he's not been piling in 110 averages, but he's been piling in competitive ones. And he's been taking chances. And he's going to give himself a chance of sorts here. Well, Wade keeps leaving himself 170 with beating on better finishes. 140. Well, it's double 15. 30 left in Players' Championship 30. But he might not get a look at it. However, that's a slip. And not getting a look at the bullseye from 86 at least 70. is an error. So double 15. Is it Wade's turn to hold throw? No, Two. it is not. And a little step over to the left and a pretty ropey attempt at that double 15, to be honest. Double four for 5-2. And James shot. Wade has not managed to hold his throw a single time in this final so far. Here's something interesting for you, Dan. Earlier in the week, the PDC released a little video of Chris Murphy at 59. The, the Winmore factory. And they were talking about things like stems and obviously the relationship between Winmore and the PDC for the boards in 2022. 
Steve's actually had a lot to do with development of aluminium stems over the years because if you look at his setup, he has grooves in the middle portion of that stem. He actually Fifth holds eight. it there. Not on the barrel. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Steve Beaton can hold what he wants. 100. He wants. It's almost a pity there's not a trophy for today. If there was, he'd be hoping to hold on to some silverware. 60. If he was to win, I'm sure Nanette would give him the biggest hug in the world. I'm sure Sammy is watching along for James. 180. Great maximum. And he didn't divert away from that treble 20, even though a single 20 would have left a bogey number because of Steve's position. I don't mind him doing that in that spot. 140. Well, ultimately, he was proved right, wasn't he? He had the mark of darts. He stayed there. He's not going to go bull bull. But he's not going to find the treble 20 either. 105. Does leave himself on his favourite double 10, though. He's following the old pattern, isn't he? He's only going to win breaks of draw. But he does need a hold if he wants to win this final at some point. First job, break here. Find double 10. And doesn't, and no Beaton's score. got a chance for 6-2. Well, he made a mess of the 86 in the last leg. 84, similar shot. 14 segment. This time he does get a dart at the bull. 59. And he's so, so close to a 6-2 lead that would have looked domineering. Is that kind? Game it shot. is. A somewhat ironic celebration to get that break of throw. Maybe that was something he did just to try and relax a little bit. But there is tension around this. I can feel the nerves of the weird and beaten fans <laughs> around the world. Well, there's, there's, 93. It's quite a rare position for Steve Beaton to be in a final. And to be honest, it probably feels a little bit alien to James Wade. It's been a while. 81. There have been no concerns about James Wade in terms of, you know, making good money out of the game. He's constantly picking up wins and making money. He's been on the World Series this year and doing bits, but he's not looked like a likely winner. To be honest, today, 80. he's not really dazzled. He's just done enough that so often that's what James Wade does. And what was the last season that James Wade didn't win a title? 128. Because he hasn't won one this year. He did win one last year. Well, he did have a little drought that he ended by winning a European Tour event in Hamburg. That's yeah, going back to 2016. I think he, did, a he did win in 2020. He won in 2019. 100. 2018, and I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. No, he won, won the World Euro Series of darts finals and, and the European, European Championship. Championship. Yeah. So we're going back to 2017 and, and years like that. Well, he's missing doubles in this game. Game shot. He pins it last dart in hand there, James Wade, when Steve Beaton was poised on 75. He has cut the gap to just one leg. Steve Beaton is in a position here where holds of throw will do, but holds of throw have been hard to come 31. by in this game, and that is a dreadful start to this 10th leg. Wade is starting to make inroads because his form 81. is improving incrementally, and Beaton's is starting to slip a little bit. He needs to find... I don't know whether a second wind is the right way to put it. He might have already had a second wind today. He might need a third or a fourth. To answer the question you posed, I think, posed, I think 2017 is the 100. only year where James Wade has not won a title of some sort. Uh, and that's going back well over a decade. 60. He constantly picks up, maybe not an enormous haul. Some years have been better than others. Yeah, he won a Euro Tour in 2016. Yeah. 180. It's a 180 here. That is number four for James Wade. We are already in perhaps his best haul for maximums in an individual 55. game today. Is he doing just enough again? 80 scored That's what I like to call a finger of fudge match. 100. Because it's just enough to give yourself a treat. 
Well, 12 grand in ranking money is the treat on offer. 125. I think Steve knows he's going to be in a bit of a Brahma from here. Game shot. It is going to be first to three from here, and Beaton has lost that advantage of throw. Having said that, it hasn't meant much in this game. It hasn't, but Wade was vulnerable there. There was a dart for 6 2. 85. 6 2. It would feel very, very different, this final. But Steve Beaton, all those decades of experience... 180. ...goes to the well and produces only his second 180 of this final. He's already won one game today worth £4,000. This is another one. You're guaranteed 8000 Another four would be fantastic for his rolling ranking, but more than anything else, seeing that focused look on Steve's face, he just wants... The win. Nothing else. It's not about the money, the ranking. It's the win. The feeling of being the last man standing. 100. In the Players' Championship Series for the year. He has said this for, for a decade. The, look, I know I'm not 100. one of the top boys anymore, but I feel that I'm good enough to win titles. I feel that I can beat everybody. And I can walk into a room and be in a tournament, and at the end of it, I can be the one walking away with the title. Well, he's illustrating that here today he's got a chance but this is a massive moment 12 segment you asking me or no for the ball 56 well, he was having a conversation with the referee mid rhythm i don't know whether that was a good or a bad thing game shot it was a bad thing because he's lost the leg now he's got to win this match 3-1 from here well, he's only 100. had two darts at the bullseye in the last four legs, all of which he has lost. And James Wade is moving through the gears. You saw that focused look on Steve Beaton's face. Well, James Wade is looking pretty at it right now. It's as if James has withstood the onslaught and is now 59. ready to move forward. Certainly feels like the game has changed. Everything he's going for, he's starting to hit. 96. The covers are coming. The 180s are there when he needs them. And the average has climbed about five, maybe six points. 59. In, we're in that region where they've been at all day. James Wade was significantly below that seven legs into this final. But this little spell, he's got back to where he was. Now he's gambled there and it's paid off again. Well, nobody's won more titles in PDC darts in the last 15 years, averaging 93. 140. He can win with a 93 when the other person's averaging 105. Treble 20. For double top, it's his third go at 125. Game and he shot. gets it right finally. It's a brilliant 12 dart leg from James Wade, who has come from 5 2 down to go within one leg of ending his almost two year title drought. In 2017, Steve got his last title. 45. But also that year, he lost in a final to Michael Van Gerwen. This is going to have to be some sprint. He's going to break that five-year streak. But Wade, who hasn't started ideally here, seems to be picking up the pace as well. And that's a bad sign. 100. I was taught at a young age that when professional dart players just pick up their pace a little bit, and stay in rhythm. That is a bad sign for their opponent. They're obviously comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a sign. It's a, a symptom that they are feeling comfortable. They're happy with how they're throwing. The darts are going where they want. They feel more comfortable, so they can just relax and play at a, a faster pace. You can't just fake it and go, oh, I'm going to throw really fast, and then I'll be really good. That's not how it works. Got to be the ball. 58. Well, Missed an opportunity. The 25 would have left to finish. Decades of playing, but never really the strongest in that side of things, Steve Beaton. And James Wade's going to leave a finish. A very, very decent one. And it's going to be a chance to win six legs on the spin. He was on the ropes, James Wade. He had to survive a dart for a 6-2 deficit. He did survive it, and he's gone into overdrive. And he's left himself a number that he really likes. Double top. 40. It's not over yet. This is for the first break of two which he needs. 
But Danger. the hold is now what he's after. One match dart survives. This story isn't ended yet. Well, Steve Beaton has dodged one 57. bullet. How many more will he need to dodge? Well, what I would say to Steve right now is if you have a disappointing visit like that, do not show it on your face. Do not feed James Wade. He really does gobble up 60. any weakness. And we all know James Wade for so long was noted for his prowess in last leg deciders. The very best 96. Steve Beaton can hope for is to take him to a last leg decider where Wade would have the throw. This is playing darts on immortal mode, having to do this. 100. A level 11 out of 10. Yeah. Continually, Steve Beaton leaves numbers after six where you can't leave a finish after nine. 60. That's a bad habit to get into, especially when Wade is giving you the chance to get the lead. It's only a one dart lead here. It's eroded. 100. Two trebles to get to a finish. Fill it up and he gets to a good one. But they're not the trebles he's after. 135. Yeah, it's in. That was a nice little sneak into the top left corner, wasn't it? Wade showing that stubbornness on the treble 20, but he's so good at negotiating his way past those blocker darts, and he's done it expertly there. It's an easier finish for James Wade. Will he get a go at it? Oh, what a shot that would have been. But he's going to have to dodge another bullet here, Steve Beaton. Well, this is a weird finish, isn't it? 61 for tops. There's the 60. There's the one. There's the tops. And there's the win for Wade. The title drought is over, but it continues for the bronze Dodonis, who had a valiant fight in him. Ultimately, he will have to wait until possibly later in 2023 for that win. But you can see what it means to Wade.